In this video we will cover some of the more advanced topics regarding Provider. This is the second video in a series. If you're completely new to Provider, then I recommend you watch the first video which covers the basics. That said, let's get going. Our time starts now. We'll cover the following over the next couple of minutes. Multi-Provider, Stream Provider, Future Provider, and Proxy Provider. A lot, so we need to go fast. Multi-Provider first. Multi is short for multiple. It provides multiple providers. Imagine you provide multiple objects like this. Using the normal approach, you'll end up with this nested hierarchy of widgets. Instead of this mess, we can clean things up and have all of the providers in a neat list. We will come back to multi-provider to see how we can combine providers even more. Next up, stream provider. Let's quickly define a stream. A stream is a sequence of asynchronous events. The stream tells you that there is an event when it is ready. For example, this stream will emit an int every second, starting at zero and counting up. Let's say we have a parent widget with a stream provider that creates the stream. Then we have a child widget which can watch the provider for changes. And there you go, now the widget updates every time the stream has a new event. Notice that before the stream emits an event, the provider returns null. Instead, we can give initial data to the provider. If the stream can emit errors, then you need to provide a catch error method. Let's modify our stream to throw an error. This map will create a new stream that throws an error if the number is divisible by 5. Now we need to provide the catch error method. If there is an error, we print the error and return a value of 0 but you can handle this in whatever way you like. As an example, let's say we want the error to be passed down to the UI. To do that, we need to model our data using sealed classes. Warning, what follows is just a simple example. At the end of the example, I will point you to a package that will make all of this easier. First, we'll create an abstract counter class and then create a count and an error class that implements counter. Count takes in an int value and error takes in a string error message. Now we modify our stream provider to provide a counter instead of an int. In the stream we return a count value and in the catch error method we return an error value. And now in the child widget we can do some conditional checks to verify what the type of the counter is. If it's an error we put the error message in a text widget. And if it's a count we put the count value in a text widget. Nice, now the error is passed down to the UI. As mentioned this was only an illustration. At the time of recording this video, Dart doesn't support sealed classes. If that is still the case when you're watching this, then I recommend you take a look at the freeze package that can generate sealed classes for you using code generation. It also has a bunch of other benefits. P.S. Freeze is made by the same guy who made Provider. Cheers to Remy Rousselet. As a last note, Stream Provider plays very well with Firebase. Check out this tutorial for more information. Next up, Future Provider. Some definitions first. A future represents the result of an asynchronous operation and can have two states, uncompleted or completed. And a future provider listens to a future and exposes the result to its descendants. For this example, we'll create a stateful widget. And in the init state, we'll call the fetch album function that makes an HTTP call and either returns a future album or throws an error. Then in the build, we return a feature provider with the dot value constructor. The reason we're using value instead of create is because we only want the HTTP call to be made once, which happens during the init state. We do not want the future to be called every time the widget rebuilds. Depending on your use case, this may be different. This is just an example. Please see the provider documentation for clarity on when to use provider and when to use provider.value. And for additional information on widget rebuilds, See this Stack Overflow post, asked and answered by Remy himself. Back to our example. The future provider will now provide the album when the future completes, and any descendants that are listening will be notified of the change. Please note that we also need to provide the catch error method, seeing as this future can return an error. The process for this is the exact same as it is for stream provider, and it's also possible to provide an initial data attribute. And that is that. Next up, proxy provider. Proxy provider combines multiple values from other providers into a new object. That new object will then be updated whenever one of the providers it depends on updates. As an example, let's create a multi-provider and then use the stream provider from before as the first provider. Then below that we will create a proxy provider. The first type argument is the value the proxy provider depends on and the second type is the value we will provide. The translations class is very simple. It takes an int value and has a getter that returns a string combined with the int. All the proxy provider does in this example is it takes in an int and creates a new translation object from that int. Now we can watch for changes on the translation provider and update our UI every time it changes. Take note that the proxy provider uses the update method to respond to updates from the other providers and that update cannot return null. In this example, the update method gets a build context, the count that is provided by the stream provider and the previous translation value of the proxy provider. 
We can also provide a create method to create an initial object to provide a value before the update method is triggered. Then in the update method, we can use the previous translation object and update it instead of creating a new one. What you want to achieve will depend on your use case. In this example, it makes sense to just use the update method and to create a new translations object every time the update method is called. There are a number of different proxy provider variants. For example, change notifier proxy provider will send its value to a change notifier provider. Note that there is no stream proxy provider. An easy way to create a stream provider that is dependent on another provider is by making use of the build context in the create method. When we create the provider, we can simply read or watch for the value from a different provider. Almost finished. It's also possible to depend on multiple providers by appending a digit after the proxy provider and specifying all of the types we depend on. It's also possible to create a proxy provider zero that will react to changes on a normal variable. Let me know if there's something else you'd like to see or get clarity on. Future provider videos will focus more on architecture and different ways provider can be used. Until then, cheers.